What's going on, people? Welcome back to another X Plus figure review. Now, before we get into the X Plus 30 centimeter Yuji Sakai Shin Godzilla, I want to take a few minutes to give a huge shout out and thank you to my great friend um, and fellow Godzilla YouTuber Matt Jacobson. And you may know him better as Gojira851 here on YouTube. Um, recently, um, Matt has decided he's going to step away from his YouTube endeavors and YouTube projects um, to focus on some issues that he has to take care of. And I, on behalf of myself and on behalf of my channel, and I'm sure on behalf of his subscribers, want to say thank you for everything that you have done. Um, thank you for your invaluable contributions to the Godzilla fandom as well as to um, the YouTube community, you know, I've had Matt on my show um, a few times um, in the past uh, couple years and Ever since then ever since our first interaction when I first saw him at G-Fest a couple years ago We have been great 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 friends So I just want to take some time and to say um, to say thank you so much Matt for Doing everything that you have done for the community and for the fandom and I applaud you for you know making this decision to step away and take care of things that you need to take care of you know um the fact that you're willing to take care of things that you need versus do the things that you want i really do applaud, uh, applaud that so i'm um, gonna take a few minutes and just excuse me a few seconds and just uh say thank you we honor you and i want to dedicate this review to you matt jacobson also known as also known as Gojira 851, and just let you know that we will hold it down if and when you decide to make a return. And if I was a bet man, I would say we have not seen the last of Gojira 851. But until then, stay strong, be cool, and we'll be here when you get back. All right? So now let's talk about the X Plus 30 centimeter Yuji Sakai Shin Godzilla. <laughs> right back at you with another video yes welcome back to Leslie Chambers Kaiju Reviews on behalf of Summit Kaiju and yes I'm your host obviously Leslie P Chambers and today we're taking a look at another X Plus figure yes another stellar and solid release of this year 2018 in a year where we have seen so many great releases from the gigantic 64 to the favorite sculptors line Gazo 1962 Mogera Frankenstein, the 25 centimeter Gargantuas, the Jet Jaguar, the, the Gigantic Series Roaring Shin. Yes, lots of great stuff, and you can definitely add this one to the list. And we're definitely taking a look at the X Plus Yuji Sakai 30 centimeter Shin Godzilla Rick Exclusive Edition from the awesome epic 2016 kaiju film Shin Godzilla or Godzilla Research. <laughs> Seriously, like. <laughs> I know that's the American, you know, the Americanization, uh, the American title of that film, but honestly, come on now. Godzilla fan to Godzilla fan. Do we really refer to this design, or at least that movie, as Godzilla Resurgence? Uh, 
it's like it's like in the in the uh, collecting community. It's not like when I hear people talk about you know Shin Godzilla figures or whatever. It's not like they say, "Hey, did you get that new Godzilla Resurgence figure?" <laughs> so yeah, uh, my point is from this mini rant. I'm sorry. The point the point is is that. Shin Godzilla is a better title, is a more appropriate title, is a more apt title. So, yeah, I don't know why they call it Godzilla Resurgence. You know, it, it, it was just better as Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla is a more powerful title, you know, but oh well, it is what it is. And yes, this is the figure. Yes, this is a great, 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 great release. It's been a long time coming, which I will go into in a few seconds. And this is the box. You know how we do things around here. Let's get into the box before we get into the figure. Yes, this is a beautiful box. I am not going to toss toss this. I am not going to trash this. This is probably, you know what? This is probably my favorite box. Box art, you know, of this year. You know what I mean? Um, you already know me. I love the third segment of box art. You know, the art on the boxes. And I definitely love the Yuji Sakai ones. You know, because they take it a little bit further with their dynamic presentation. You know, to have more flair to it. And this one... Even though this particular Godzilla design is not really one of my top five favorites, I enjoy this box. I really do. You know, with the red, you know, Shin Godzilla here in the back, you know, the figure right here in the front, you know, whatever. It's a figure right here, really. Um, Godzilla 2016, you just kind of model collection, the yellow signer, um, sticker signifying it's a Rick boy. So, yes, I love this box. Once again, it's my favorite box art of this year. You know what I mean? So that's it with the box. So let's leave it right here as a more of a presentation piece. Let me slide my big behind over. <laughs> and this is the figure of the Yuji Sakai 30 centimeter Shin Godzilla Rick exclusive. And let's go into the backstory. Um, this, this, the first time we've ever seen any idea of this figure coming was way last year at the Winter Wonder Festival show um, back in February of 2017. And if you remember, that was the, uh, basically, uh, that was a, a whole Shin Godzilla display convention. There was so many Shin Godzilla um, stuff out there, you know, from model kits, especially from X Plus, you know. That was when they introduced, or, or unveiled rather, the gigantic series Shin Godzilla, the first one, you know what I mean? They introduced the uh, many defo reels of Shin Godzilla, you know, the fourth form or whatever, as well as the second form and the third form. Not to mention the 25 centimeter Kamada Kun, you know, from X Plus, the 30 centimeter um, third form from X Plus. And they actually teased um, this model kit from Yuji Sakai. As a matter of fact, it was on a display card, right? And he was selling, I, I guess, a few of, the, few of these kits either at the show or it was going to be coming up for release, I guess, soon afterwards. I don't really remember. But there was a display card with Yuji, um, with this um, kit of Yuji Sakai. This was taken from a Yuji Sakai kit. And it had X Plus at the bottom left-hand corner. So we knew at that point that X Plus and Yuji Sakai was going to come to a deal and bring this out to us. And a lot of us thought that it would be coming out that same year. But honestly, this thing did not come out until just this uh, past September, you know, uh, a month ago. last um, the, the last September going into October. So from February 2017 to September 2018, you know, almost a year and a half. And it's finally here after being pushed back a couple times, you know, because I guess all the stuff that X Plus is trying to throw on us at one time. You know, things like that do happen, you know, um, when you have so much releases and sometimes production issues, whatever, may cause delays and sometimes all this stuff may be, may be dumped on you at, at one time, especially if you have a lot of pre-orders open. Um, but after waiting for so long, I'm glad it's finally here. You know, I know a lot of, lo I know a lot of folks even opted not getting the gigantic series Shin Godzilla because they were waiting for this one. You know, I know it sucks to wait. Um, after waiting for so long, this thing is finally here. Let me just tell you, this thing is amazing. It really is. As um, far as like Sakai pieces, once again, this is from the 30 centimeter, 30 centimeter Yuji Sakai line, and this is the seventh release. Yes, the first one was the 89, the second one was the Hokkaido version 91, the third was the GMK, the fourth was the, the Sakai 92, the fifth was the second 91, the Shinjuku version, the sixth one was the Sakai 54, and this marks number seven. They're not done yet. At the time of this recording, it is what? Halloween! 
Uh, yeah, Halloween. It's, ain't it funny I'm doing a Shin Godzilla review <laughs> on Halloween since basically this like the most nightmarish version of Godzilla or whatever. Well, they're not done yet. At the time of this recording, they're coming out with another Sakai piece coming out this year, which will make the third Sakai piece this year with the um, closed mouth version of the 1989. Basically, it's going to be the same version S89, except it's going to be closed mouth. It's going to come with a little mini Super X2, and it's going to have light up dorsal plates, you know? Um, I'm not going to get it, honestly, because I'm not really feeling the original one, so that's just money I'm saving. But hey, if you want it, go for it, you know what I mean? Um, it's coming out in December, and one of the other reasons why I'm not getting it, it, getting it is because there's something else that's coming out in, in December that I'm so looking forward to, and I can't wait to get my hands on that. But you know, from those two reasons, that's the reason I'm, why I'm not going for this new Sakai. But I had to get my hands on this one. You know what I mean? And I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Tyler Boots Carlson. He helped me out getting it, getting this Rick. Um, because when this thing was announced, um, and that's the thing. Um, don't get me wrong. I I am loving Shin Godzilla more and more as I like it. Far as the design, it's still growing on me, growing on me to a certain extent. Like I love all my figures of Shin Godzilla. Don't get me wrong, especially the gigantic. But it's not like the '64 or the '91, in my opinion, at least for me. I like it, but I don't love it too much. Where I want too many representations of it, you know. So I was really on the fence whether I was going to get this figure or not, honestly. Um, but after thinking about it, I was like, you know what, if I'm going to go for one, I'm going to go for the Rick. Um, um, which I'll talk about as far as the difference between the standards and the Rick later on. Um, but I was like, you know what, I'm going to go for the Rick. And the Rick basically is, it comes in a translucent type of state. You know, it's made more so of translucent red vinyl, where it gives off like a more organic paint app on the figure to simulate all the nuclear fission that's basically raging out of control in Godzilla's body. Where, at least in the fourth form, where you see him on screen, you know, you see, like, the red just pulsating from his body. That's what is embedded in the Rick feature of this figure. That's why I had to go Rick on this one. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm loving it, you know? Um, like I said, this is the seventh release of the Yuji Sakai 30 centimeter line. It came behind the 54 this year alone. Um, it, it's the second release this year alone of the, of the Sakai line, the first being the 54, and the third, like I mentioned, is the upcoming closed mouth Sakai 89. Um, but I'm glad that Sakai, you know, did a great job with this sculpt, and I'm glad that X Plus did a great job, you know, taking, you know, the, taking this figure from that sculpt and basically made just an awesome representation of the fourth form of Shin Godzilla. And honestly, I don't see myself going after any more um, Shins. Honestly, um, because I have the Sakai, obviously, I have the Gigantic, I have the um, the 25 centimeter, the original one, um, the standard, and I have uh, the Defo Reel, and I also have the 25 centimeter Kamada Kun, and I also have the 30 centimeter third form of Shin. So, pretty much, I, I'm good. I don't see myself going after any more Shins. Once again, I like it, but I don't love it enough where I want too many representations, representations of it in my collection. So in my opinion, you know, if I'm going to stop, you know, I might as well stop with the best one. And in, in my opinion, this is arguably the best Shin Godzilla that X Plus has ever done. Um, when they have pretty, pretty much brought out almost, um, almost every Shin Godzilla figure that they have brought out has been really, 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 really good. Um, but um, I think this is the best. I really do. I think this is the best, you know. Um, pictures can't really do it justice, you know what I mean? Um, so that's pretty much the backstory with me and how I got this figure. Once again, thank you to Tyler Boots Carlson for helping me out getting this Rick. I really do appreciate it. And you know what? Let's just go into the review. Um, once again, this is taken from a Yuji Sakai kit. Um, uh, and this is an amazing kit. This is probably the most accurate representation of the fourth form of Shane Godzilla from the movie. When you look at it, it's really, it reminds me personally of the, uh, of the post of the poster. Where you did, where, as opposed to where, where, where you're looking up at Shane Godzilla, when you look at it from this angle like this, when you look up at it, this is, this is what it, it reminds me of. Now, this figure is probably the closest thing to a 30 centimeter. That's the thing that I've heard a lot of folks say about the Yuji Sakai line, um, what they criticize about it in a way, is the fact that 
even though they're billed as 30 centimeters, they're not really 30 centimeters because they're taken from a 30 centimeter resin kit. And we all know when you take, you know, when you convert resin into vinyl, there's going to be some shrinkage involved, you know. Um, that's why the Sakai's come up to at least 27, 28 centimeters. You know, they're not really 30. Um, but with this one, he's pushing 30 just a little bit more than that, than, than, than every other Sakai figure. You know, he's probably at like 11... 0.5 inches, which is like 29, pushing, you know, 29. He's almost there at the 30. Now, not counting the tail, because the tail, obviously, and that's the thing with the box. That's why the box is so big, because his tail is like, I want to say he's like 17 inches, excuse me, 17 inches tall, you know? Um, so that's why the box is so big, because, to, you know, make up for the tail being so big. But yes, this is the first Sakai figure that really pushes more more towards the 30 centimeter mark and I really do enjoy that but this figure you really have to have in hand to really understand and really appreciate how awesome it is especially for the Rick um, now I mentioned earlier about the standard now the standard is pretty much the same except the standard was made with the solid red vinyl so light can't pass through it so also when you put up against a light source it won't pass through it with this one being more so of a translucent red vinyl light will pass through it you know um which also in a way is kind of a bad thing to a certain extent for us to rip because when you oversaturate the figure with light the paint apps are not going to look organic you know and that was one of the things that i saw um when this figure uh was displayed at the wonder festival show the summer wonder festival show back in i want to say july going into august and they displayed this one alongside with the standard and it was oversaturated with light that the organic red paint apps didn't look as good. And a lot of folks got freaked out about that. As a matter of fact, I know a few folks, when they saw that after they uh, made pre-orders for the Rick, a lot of them got cold feet and decided not to, to pursue that pre-order, which I think is a shame. And let me just talk about that just for two seconds. And let me just, I mean, obviously I'm not going to change um, veteran collectors' minds or whatever, because everybody's, everybody's going to feel how they want to feel. And I mean this with the utmost respect. I want to talk to more so of the new collectors coming to the hobby uh, that don't really know about these things or whatever. And honestly, you can't judge these things by a picture. I don't know how many times I've been saying that for God knows how long. And honestly, I'm going to lump myself into that category too because i done that before too. I have taken, um, I have judged a figure that I pre-ordered based on early pictures that we have seen pop up from people to get, this, to get these, these figures early overseas and nine times out of ten those pictures are not good so i use that as my reasoning to either like the figure or hate the figure before i even get my hands on it you know and ever since the 30 centimeter burning gozzle the 30 centimeter burning gozzle that was the last time where i did that where i saw a picture of the 30 centimeter burning gozzle um early and i was like you know what i don't like it because i was afraid that was the figure that i'm gonna get when i get it in my hands and that figure wowed me beyond belief. So ever since then, I maintained the philosophy, don't judge these things unless you get them in your hand. Because once again, I've said it, a lot of other G YouTubers said it, like Gojira 851, Richard Iso, Brutazilla, you know, all these great YouTubers that collect these things and review these things have said the same thing. You can't judge these figures based off a picture. You have to wait until you get it in your hand, then make a full judgment um, come to your own conclusions then and then at that point if you still don't like it you can always resell it you can always resell it just keep the packaging make sure the figures in great condition and you can always get your money back i don't suggest you try and um horrendously overprice it like some of these um stupid people on ebay do yes and i said stupid because it this is <laughs> don't get me started on that because at the time of this recording, uh, like I said, even though he just dropped basically almost a month ago, this thing is already already horrendously overpriced. I remember seeing a post on the um, Xbox Collectors Facebook group that somebody was charging $600 for this. And I was on eBay a couple days ago. Somebody was offering or at least wanting to sell this thing at $434. Really? This thing really cost me shipped to my house like maybe $250 to $275 which is a good price considering it, it, it's, a, it's a, a Sakai, a well-detailed Sakai, you know, but right now it's already horrendously overpriced, you know, by all these eBay rapists out there, 
you know? Um, because this thing is pretty much sold out everywhere. You can't really find one unless you go on by E. Maybe you can find one, pop them on the rock or whatever. But as far as like eBay, yes, you can spend a whole lot more than what you need to, you know what I mean? And I think that's a shame, you know? But the point is, is that you have to wait until you get these figures in your hand then come to your own conclusion. Like I said, then if you don't like it at that point, you can always resell it. And I would suggest resell it at the same value that you pay for it. That way you're not losing anything. No harm, no foul. Just don't try to oversell it, or at least don't try to overprice it because you don't want it to take advantage of other people because I'm sure you would not want that anybody to take advantage of you. So, you know, just, you know, just try to do the right thing when it comes to um, reselling these things. But once again, you have to wait until you get to get these figures in your hand before you make a full conclusion. And I think a lot of folks that got cold feet and ran away from the pre-order, and then once they saw myself and a lot of other people getting this figure and praising it, I'm sure a lot of those people really, really um, have a second thoughts now. But that's the whole point. Don't judge these figures based off early pictures, okay? Even people that take the most fantastic pictures, like my good friend David F. Dotko, my great friend John Ruffin, those guys are great, awesome, and talented, brilliant kaiju toy photographers, you know? And they take the best pictures in the world, and I, and, I, and I won't tell you differently. But even they, on their best day, even those pictures don't really do these figures justice, even though they do a lot of figures justice because those figures are that awesome. But once again, the point is, make sure you have the figure in your hand before you come to a full conclusion. Because at that point, you know, if you, you know, do what I did back in the day, because right now I don't do it anymore. I just wait till I have the figure in my hand before I go into any kind of conclusion or judgments. It takes, the, it takes the fun out of it, you know what I mean? Because you be all bummed. And then once you get it, get the figure in your hand and you realize how awesome it really is, it's like, wow, I was really, I was really just tripping for nothing. That's the whole point, you know what I mean? So... That's my little mini rant about that. I'm sorry if kind of like derailed from the overall um, review, but I just want to put it out there. I'm trying to put it out there as respectful as I can. I don't really want to offend anybody, but there's some things that I've been seeing that I need to address, and that's like the number one thing that I want to talk about. Like I said, I don't intend to change old veterans' collectors' minds, but new collectors, always keep that in mind, especially if you want to pursue these X Plus figures. Now, get back to this X Plus figure. This thing is amazing. Yes, it sure is. Um, the detail speaks for itself, you know. Um, under, under certain lighting conditions, yes, if you oversaturate this figure with light, the red paint apps are not going to look as organic as the um, the intended effect is. Uh, the intended effect sh the intended effect should be. Um, but if you have it under the right lighting conditions, this thing is amazing. Um, once again, like I said, the standard just came with a solid red vinyl with a little silver lining in it where light won't pass through it. But with this one, the redness in the figure kind of pops out a little bit more. And that was my main reason for wanting to get the red. It stands out. Plus, I wanted something that was kind of like, kind of like different from my 25 centimeter fourth form of shin. You know what I mean? And this one blows that one out of the water. Even though that one's a great figure, you know what I mean? It really is a great figure. Um, but this one, the detail on this thing is so amazing just everything about this figure is awesome from his face his his jagged teeth just all over um his um top jaw and lower jaw is awesome you know the bone uh whatever this is bone crest on his chest the arms are really puny and bony and with that typical shin godzilla pose with his with his um claws you know um pointing upwards or whatever um the dorsal plates they look awesome um, the tail, oh my god, the tail is amazing. Now, that's one of the things I may criticize about this figure, but then again, it's not really a criticism. It's more so something um, that, I, that I see right now as I'm looking at it. As um, far as the Rick, now, it may not be as apparent on the standard, which may be a good thing, but as far as like, the tip of the tail, and we don't know about this thing on the tip of Gosler's tail, whatever that thing is. Is it another monster? I don't know. Um, but with the Rick being a more brighter red paint app you know with the translucency of the uh of the vinyl you can't really make out too much detail as far as the tip of the tail or at least like the creature's face you know the red just kind of drowns it out i think on the standard it doesn't drown it out that may be one of the issues i have with it but then again i don't really look at this figure for the thing on the end you know um actually one of my favorite things about shin godzilla is the tail i love how big the tail is how it's going upwards so you know whatever it's very graceful 
And honestly, this is something that I wanted the, the, the gigantic Shin to have. I wanted the gigantic Shin, even though I love that figure, I wanted him to have this pose. You know, with him more so upright and with his tail going upwards or whatever. Um, and we all know that the gigantic Shin is twisting or whatever, but you'll see that inside of the person in, in a few seconds. Um, but he's twisting or whatever, kind of give off a more stylized pose in a way. But in a way, I do kind of wish that the gigantic had this one. But then again, had that had that happened, he'd probably be a whole lot more expensive, a whole lot more heavier. And the last thing that figure needs is more expense. <laughs> Trust me on that. Um, but once again, this is a great figure. Another solid release of this year of 2018, and especially a solid release of the uh, Sakai line, you know? And I'm glad I um, changed my mind about getting it, because once again, I was on the fence about getting it. Um, but after thinking about it, I was like, you know what? I won't mind having one more Shin Godzilla collectible in my collection. And since more likely this probably will, probably will, will be the last, I think, I think I can't think of a better note to go out of. So this is a great figure. So if you can find one for a great price, which is debatable at this point, honestly, more so, you probably need to, like I said earlier, try buy E, because that way you can find a more so of a, of a more affordable price. Hit up Tyler Boots Carlson on Facebook. He can help you out with trying to um, score stuff on buy E. If you don't know familiar with what buy E is, you know, I talked about this in, in other videos, so I'll try to be brief here. Buy E is basically like the equivalent version of eBay here in America. It's like an online auction service over there in Japan, but it's more so Japanese text and Japanese oriented, obviously. So you'll need somebody like a middleman to help you navigate yourself through the site, you know. So hit up Tyler Boots Carlson. He can help, definitely help you score one for a good price if you're not willing to pay those horrendous um, higher prices on eBay right now for this figure, you know. And I don't, instead of saying, I don't, I don't, with this being a quality piece, I don't mind paying a little bit extra. Even if I did miss the pre-order on this, I wouldn't mind paying a little bit extra just to get this figure, especially if I wanted it that bad. I wouldn't mind, like I said, I paid like $250, $275 shit for this. I wouldn't even mind paying like a, a, an extra $50 more, but that's it. I don't suggest paying two, $300 more for this release, you know? I don't suggest that, because then at that point, you really kind of wasted money. Because at some point, somebody may decide to sell theirs on the line, or you may find one on Buy E for a cheaper price, or one may pop up on Mondo Rocket for a cheap price, you know? Just bide your time, and if you really want one, just scour the internet. You like I said, try buy E, try Mondo Rocket, or hit up Tyler Boots Cost, and maybe he can help you out. But try and get this figure, especially if you're a fan of Shin Godzilla. This is the best piece for you. It really is, and the fact it, it's a, a you just a Kai piece, it makes it even that more amazing. You know. All right, so let's do with uh, let's go with there's a couple of size comparisons, and we're ready to review up. And thank you so much for hanging there with me. I really do appreciate it. So let's go with the first size comparison. Okay, folks, this is the first size comparison, and let's do a Sakai comparison, shall we? And alongside the Yuji Sakai 30 centimeter of Shin Godzilla, let's go from left to right. With the 30 centimeter Yuji Sakai Godzilla 1991, the Hokkaido landing version, of course, Shin, um, the uh, Sakai GMK, and of course, the only Showa, the granddaddy of them all, the one that started it all. The Yuji Sakai Godzilla 1954, and as you can see, as you can see, they look great together. Conspicuous by the absence because I have at least six of them. The only one I don't have, as I mentioned earlier, I don't have the 89. I had it at one time, but I since sold it. Um, but the other two there are not here. Well, maybe, actually, one is here in a way. The Sakai 92, maybe you can see it over there in the background by Batra over there. Um, that's up there, and I have the second version of Godzilla 1991. Um, the Shinjuku landing version, but it's over here on the uh, other side of the room. But I just wanted to show how these figures look great together. The detail on these things are amazing. As a matter of fact, I will give you my most favorite to my least favorite. Uh, let's see. My most favorite, obviously, if you know me and you know me and my channel, even though I love the Sakai Shin Godzilla and it's a great piece, it is detailed beyond belief and beyond what mere words can describe. However, the best one, in my opinion, I'm still holding as the reigning heavyweight champ um, is, of course, the, the, the Sakai 91 over on the far left. I love that thing. That thing is amazing. That thing is perfection. You know, my second favorite probably would be GMK. Honestly, um, I love GMK. That, that figure is so amazing as well. 
Number three. Hmm, you know what? Honestly, number three, I would go with Shin Godzilla. Yeah, Shin Godzilla will be number three. Uh, number four will probably be the 54, because that thing's amazing too. Then you go with the uh, 92. Then you go with the uh, second 91. So that's how I will rank them, you know. But once again, that 91, whoo! Mm, mm, mm. That, yeah. That thing's the truth. But still, they all look great together. They're all individually have so much to offer and they shine in their own individual ways, you know, whatever. So just want to show you how these Sakai's look, 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 look together. As you can see the evolution of Godzilla throughout the years, you know, from the Showa to the Heisei to the Millennium and to, I guess, to whatever era that we're calling the new versions now. So uh, this is a nice representat representation of you see the evolution of Godzilla, Godzilla throughout the eras. I think that's awesome. Speaking of awesome, Let's do one more size comparison and we'll wrap the review up. Okay, folks, and this is the last size comparisons. And here I have all of the fourth form of Shane Godzilla's I have in my collection. Of course, I have the Man in the Hour, of course, the Yuji Sakai 30 centimeter Rick Exclusives Love Shin. This awesome mini little death for real. Ain't he, ain't he amazing? Woohoo! Yes, he is. Um, the 25 centimeter, which is a great figure. Don't get me wrong. The 25 centimeter, that's a great figure, even though this one has more detail than that one. But that one's a great figure in in its own right. You know what I mean? You, you know what I mean? Great, 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 great figure. And of course, the big guy in the back, the biggest X plus figure that they have ever done, right there. The X plus gigantic series fourth form of Shin Godzilla. And as you can see, they all look great together. They all look like a big giant plate of beef jerky. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to showcase all the fourth forms together I have in my collection. Now, this is not all the fourth forms that Xbox has ever done. You know, there are a few that I have not got my hands on. More like I probably won't get my hands on. Like the purple roaring Shin Godzilla gigantic. Won't get that one. I won't get the death of real roaring with the purple. Won't, won't get that one. And the main reason for that is that I don't really like how the Godzilla looks with his mouth open and his jaw, his lower jaw separates. Not really feeling that. But... This is it. This is it for me. Um, I don't see myself, like I mentioned earlier, going after any more of Shin Godzilla's. I think what I have here, as well as the uh, Kamano Kun and the uh, third form, 30, 30 centimeter form, excuse me, third form, 30 centimeter version of Shin um, from X Plus, I, I'm good. And as you can see, all these look great together. You can see the evolution of what X Plus has done as far as um, Shin Godzilla is concerned, you know? Um, once again, they all shine in their own right. Of course, the gigantic being so big, the Sakai being so detailed, the def the, the Death of Real being so cute, <laughs> the 25 centimeter, you know, if you don't want to spend that much money for the Sakai, this is like the next best thing. So they all shine in their own individual ways. Now, the one that gets my highest recommendation, um... Honestly, what probably will be the Yuji Sakai version, you know, because the gigantic one, even though out of all of them, the gigantic is really my favorite. Um, the Sakai is my second favorite, um, but the uh, Sakai is really, really more, really more affordable. You know, if you can find one for a great price, it's really more affordable. The gigantic is a massive investment. It really is. Um, once again, that's probably the most expensive X plus figure purchase that I have ever done. Rightfully so, since this is the biggest X plus figure that they have ever done. Um, but for one, it's a massive investment for the gigantic, and you need a lot of space to house this thing. You know, you can't put it in like uh, in like shelves unless you have like big shelves. You know what I mean? You need you know a lot of space to accommodate the gigantic. Um, you kind of do with Sakai really, because his tail, as you can see, his tail is, is almost about the height. Of Shin Godzilla, you know what I mean, the gigantic. Um, but I think for investment purposes and for space for for space purposes, um, I would say go for the Sakai first. You know, as you can see, you know, like I mentioned earlier with the uh, with the translucent vinyl, you see with the light how it hits it, where it, where it's shining a little bit more. You know, I kind of wish they kind of did that with the gigantic, but still, it is what it is. But these are all solid pieces as far as the fourth form of Shin. You can't go wrong with either one. But if you can go for one. First, um, for us like space wise and investment wise, go for the uh, Sakai first and then try to work your way up to the gigantic or whatever. And that's my recommendation for us the fourth form of Shin. And speaking of Shin, let's talk about that right now.
Okay, folks, let's talk about the awesome film Shin Godzilla. Once again, I'm not calling it Godzilla Resurgence. I'm not doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, Shin Godzilla. Or I guess in the Japanese translation, you know, Shin means what? True, new, or God. Once again, a more appropriate title for this monster and for this epic film. And I've gone through the film a few times in my videos, so I won't... I won't do a lot of that here, but what I will do is what I will tell you my appreciation for this film and what it has done for the character of Godzilla. You know, um, what, aside from the fact that this film really stands out as a unique Godzilla film in the franchise, you know, a, a lot of these Godzilla films, they're, main, they're, they're mostly known for a specific uh, role or they're known for a, a, a specific thing about that film. Like Monster Zero, you know, it's known for Godzilla and Rodan going to outer space to fight King Ghidra involving aliens for the first time and blah, blah, blah. Um, or Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 1974, the first time Godzilla faced off against a cyborg, uh, cybernetic uh, organism which is who is just like him, you know. Or Godzilla vs. Biollante, you know, the, the fears of biotechnology and where Godzilla faces off against uh, Godzilla slash plant hybrid monster you know um so all these films are pretty much known for a, spe a specific thing you know and what stands out to me about shin godzilla is the fact that this film is so brilliantly done and you can look at it from two different perspectives now or question what kind of film it, what kind of film it really is is it a monster film uh disguised as a political satire or is, is it a political satire film disguised as a Godzilla film? Either way, you can make the argument for both. Um, but either way, it's very intriguing. You know, the circumstances behind Godzilla's um, evolution. You know, what what exactly, what, what kind of creature is this thing? What happens to him at the end? All these things, all these ambiguous uh, or amb amb ambiguity about Godzilla is so intriguing to me. Where this film, in a way, creates more questions and answers. And you know what? I'm cool with that. I know a lot, of, a lot of hardcore Godzilla fans don't really particularly care for this one because it stepped outside the box. It's not your conventional or normal Godzilla film. Some people just hate, a, hate straight up hate the film. You know what I mean? They, they, they just don't like it, which is fine. But I don't think this film should be very dismissive. Or you should be dismissive of this film just because it's not your conventional Godzilla film. If anything, that's what makes the beauty of this film. That's what makes this film so beautiful, is the fact that it's not your typical Godzilla film. It is not like what other Godzilla films has done in the past. It steps outside the box. That, to me, is what I appreciate a lot more with Shin Godzilla. Now, it all started with Godzilla 2014, because let's face it, honestly, Shin Godzilla was made in response to 2014. And even though 2014 is a good film, and honestly, between the two, I actually like watching 2014 more than 2016, or at least Shin Godzilla, even though I love the film, you know, whatever, but I kind of gravitate more towards the 2014, you know, because I have more fun with that one, you know what I mean? But think about it. When you dissect 2014 at its core, it's basically Godzilla, a prehistoric monster that comes in. Even though it's, it's somewhat layered in the film with, you know, different storylines and blah, blah, blah. But at its core, 2014 is about Godzilla coming in um, to take on two monsters that threaten humanity. And he beats them down. He goes back to the, into the ocean. How many times have we seen that over the years with Godzilla? Even though that it's all been entertaining. But we've seen that a lot in past films. The premise about that. You know, we've seen that same premise many times before. So that's why with Shin Godzilla, you know, that came out a couple years later, this really is a multi-layered and really diverse and really complicated Godzilla film. And you know what? That's what that was what the character was needing. You know, because as far as Godzilla is concerned, you can only do so much with a character, especially with the character that has the longevity that, 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 that Godzilla has. You know, 65 years come next year. You know, there's only so many ideas that you can um, implement with this character where you run the risk of the, of the idea or the character becoming stale. Like how many times have we seen Godzilla come in, destroy cities, and beat down monsters and then go away? We've seen that many times before. Not trying to hate on that, not trying to rag on that, but you, when you see it too many times, sometimes it runs the risk 
of becoming stale. But what Shin Godzilla proved to me is that you can take this character, this beloved icon character, and create a new story behind it where you can see him go into different directions and different character avenues, you know? And sometimes you have to do that to run the risk of alienating its fan base. I know, I know a lot of Godzilla fans were turned off by this film, you know? Because once again, it's not your conventional Godzilla film. But to me, this pr film proves that you can take this character, you can take Godzilla and go into different directions to make it very, very interesting. Even though, like I mentioned before, I'm not really feeling the anime Godzilla, you know, as far as design or whatever. But I do appreciate what they were trying to do with those films. They were trying to take Godzilla into new, different character character directions. And that was really started by Shane Godzilla, in my opinion. Because once again, 2014, we've seen the same premise before, where Godzilla comes in, beats down two monsters, and then goes away. With Shane Godzilla, this film proved that there's a lot of mileage left in this character. There's a lot of new ideas and avenues that you can take with this character. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what they do with this character in the future, whether it be Legendary or Toho and beyond. But once again, I owe a lot to Shane Godzilla and Shane Godzilla proves that once again, you can create new um, characters. You can, you can create new storylines with this awesome character and make it very interesting, make it very fresh, and give him even more longevity where he may be around for 60 more years. And I think we owe a lot to that, to Shin Godzilla. So that's the reason why I appreciate Shin Godzilla. Once again, it's a unique film. I love it more and more and more as I watch it. Once again, it's not... It's not in my top five or top ten favorites of Shin Godzilla. You know, I, excuse me, of my favorite Godzilla films. I have to be in the mood to watch it. But once I watch it, I'm really enjoying what this film offers. You know, with this really, you know, complicated storyline. It's multi-layered characters. The, the, the mysterious origins and just everything about Godzilla is really, really more questions than answers. You know, when you really think about it. But that's, that's the beauty of Shin Godzilla, the fact that it goes into a different direction and you're able to appreciate it when it's all said and done. You know, so that's why I love, love Shin Godzilla and that's why I highly suggest you give this film a rewatch, try and look at it from a different set of eyes, try to realize and accept the beauty of the fact that because it's not a conventional Godzilla film, it is not like the rest, that's what makes it so beautiful. So please keep that, keep that in mind when you watch this film again. You know what I mean? So that pretty much concludes my review of the X Plus Yuji Sakai 30 centimeter Rick exclusive version of Shin Godzilla from the awesome, powerful 2016 epic Godzilla film. Shin Godzilla, you have any questions, holler me down in the comment section or hit me, up, hit me up on Facebook via Leslie P. Chambers. We'll definitely go from there. Yes. Woo! I'm so glad I have this figure. Yes, another still of release of 2018 as far as X Plus is concerned. I love it. I really do love it. Once again, I think this probably will be my last Shin Godzilla acquisition for, you know, as far as I'm concerned. And once again, I couldn't think of a better way to go out with this awesome piece right here. And it's my highest recommendation. If you can go for any Shin Godzilla figure, really go for them all because they're all awesome. You know what I mean? If you can, as far as space and money-wise, go for the Sakai. You will not be disappointed. You know, and once again, Gojira 851, once again, we honor you, we salute you. This review is, de is dedicated to you. We hope that you come back stronger and better than ever at some point. But until then, we will hold it down until you do. All right? So that's pretty much it for my review. Once again, lots of reviews are coming. Kong Skull Island, the Space Godzilla and Little Godzilla set I have over here. Um, RMC Gamma, still got a get to that guy. A lot of other stuff I'm getting in November, Fire Rodan, the Flying King, Ghidra 68, the 65 Godzilla. Also, woo, the 67 is coming December. Yes, the, the 1967 from Son of Godzilla. Woo, the third centimeter. Yes, it is on its way. Can't wait for that one. Woo, so a lot of stuff is coming here on the channel. Please stay tuned and you will not be disappointed. All right, and get this figure. Get the Yuji Sakai Shin Godzilla Rares, the Rick exclusive or the standard. Either way, you can't go wrong with this epic release. All right? So I thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see y'all again on the next Figure Move review. All right? Y'all take it easy.